Okay, it's good. All right, so welcome to my third installment of Don't Watch This. And if you are still watching, you do not take directions very well. Uh, but regardless, many of you have been asking uh, exactly what robot have I been talking about uh, when I've been, do I've been looking at, <laughs> to recap, I've been looking at some of my own games from the USGO Congress, and I'm incorporating some of my own analysis along with uh, some comments that I've procured from professional players. And also comparing it to uh, a Go AI. And the Go AI is actually the Leela software. Uh, many of you guys are familiar with this. This is the like strongest available free uh, Go AI that I think you can currently download, at least in English it is. Um, and in this case, instead of running it on my own computer, uh, there's actually a site called Rosie Stein. There's a Stein that's rose colored, I guess. And uh, if you go here, they have a Go game analyzer. You can actually run the Leela bot on their site. You can upload their game. Uh, if you want it at the highest strength, you have to pay a little bit of money. And I emphasize the little amount of money. Each game review is somewhere between like 20 and 25 cents, depending on your exchange rate. Um, if you're just looking to do a handful of games, it's really quite uh, affordable, especially considering you're using someone else's you know, nice hardware for uh, maybe a few hours worth of time uh, to run all these game reviews. So uh, that's quite nice. And that way I can do other things on my computer, like record this Go video. Um, if you don't want to pay anything, then just download Lila yourself. You can do it all for free. But again, it's a it's a real small amount of money we're talking about here. I'm a little bit scared that if I tell all of you about this site, that you'll all go here and you'll all upload things and you'll all blow up the server, uh, and then the wait time will instead of you know be an hour or so, the wait time will go up to a few days. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. So uh, hey, if you want to go get your games analyzed by a, approximately like a seven don plus robot, uh, this is a nice place to go do it. Uh, without having to install anything yourself. Anyway, let's do some Go. So if you... Uh, is that window? It's kind of in the middle. Okay, good. Sorry. If you recall from my previous two games, uh, on day one of the US Go Congress, I went in and I won. I was black against a, a, a Chinese woman. Day two, uh, I was playing a, you know, let's say young, young adult, maybe even teenager age, uh, you know, Chinese player, uh, and I was, I was the white player and I lost. Uh, well, today the pattern continues. I'm black again and playing against uh, Melissa Chow, who's a, uh, she's actually one of Feng Yun's students. I don't know how old she is. She's, I don't know, somewhere teenager-ish. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, um, she's a pretty strong player, although uh, I think uh, she got a little either distracted in this game or, or I don't know. There, there, there's a couple of moments in, in this game that might that, um, she confessed that Feng Yun would be yelling at her later for. But uh, this game uh, features some pretty, some pretty big killing of things. So I definitely want you to stick around and watch stuff die because that's cool, right? You got, I, I presume, like if you're watching Go videos, you like it when stuff dies. Uh, let's make that assumption right there. I mean, like I said, I'm black. And uh, we play very standard opening so far. And uh, what's interesting, though, is up till here, this point, um, the robot, this Leela robot, really actually preferred white for some reason. And I can't really figure out why, because in the next few moves, it sort of reverts back to being a 50-50 game. Um, but for some reason, it really likes white here. Uh, and I think that's just sort of a bug in the software, potentially, or something. I don't know. Um, anyway, this move is interesting. Uh, we saw this type of attachment actually played in the Lee Sedol game 5 against AlphaGo. Uh, that was, again, now well over a year ago, almost a year and a half ago. And, uh, you know, Melissa tries it here. And I sort of blindly follow the, the standard variation without too much thinking. Um, I don't think there's anything else to do here. Um, but at this point... Uh, oh, and I also made this note right here. You guys can see that um, the percentage for black had sort of reverted more or less back to 50-50. Um, but at this point, black has some choices. And for black to really finish this shape, um, black should extend a P15. 
However, that's really also over-concentrated, and you really only need P15 if you care about the top. And I don't really care about the top. I mean, white has another stone here, so it's not like I'm going to build this into some sort of huge moyo. Um, and in the game, I end up kicking this stone, uh, mainly because uh, my plan is to pincer here, but I don't want uh, Melissa to treat this stone lightly. I want her to um, basically have two groups that she needs to worry about. And if I just pincer directly, my feeling is that the stone will basically be treated as lightly and will either later invade the corner or make a base or jump out. Like, there's a million ways to handle it, um, but she has no reason to do any of them right now. So in the game, I kick. However, the robot uh, <laughs> said, this is a mistake and I should just pincer right away. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll pretend that's a thing. Um, but now I get to pincer. And also, the robot didn't actually like my pincer either. The robot really wanted to pincer one more uh, stone over. Um, but uh, I think I think there's an argument made for both. Um, the reason why I think this one uh, is could be considered too close is that white basically has to run out now. And when white runs out, the stone is now going to be closer to the side that's running out. Um, whereas if I put it one line further away, actually white has white white will white feels a lot less pressure. Um, but when white still runs out, um, there's also a lot less pressure on my stone. So I kind of buy this as being a small mistake. Uh, white takes the initiative to play an Atari here. And in general, um, if you're going to play this way as white, you shouldn't expect your opponent to respond. Um, I mean, this is a big move, right, connecting here. But basically, um, you know, if black's going to Tanuki all the way back here and not care about this side, black's also probably not going to care about this side here either. And this is the variation we saw in the Lee Sadal game. All right. I played this move. Uh, this is not a good move. Basically, there's too much stuff happening up here that needs attention. Um, and I kind of thought that my move, I don't want to say helped, but had an effect on it. Because I'm thinking, oh, well, if this is running out, if I have a stone over here already, then it's not like White's going to be able to come around here and make a million points. And or I could actually make points if I can continue to play this side while White is running out. Um, in the end, it's not very good logic, uh, just because there's too much space. Black can't actually make this directly into territory. Um, this stone's going to get counterattacked way before this happens, um, or before any sort of real potential here happens. Um, so it's just, it's just not the right direction. Uh, Feng Yun, who is a 9 professional and who uh, is Melissa's teacher, or one of her teachers, I guess she has another teacher, who a uh, professional player who lives in China. Feng Yun now is a 9 pro who lives, I think, in New Jersey, and she reviewed the last game as well. Uh, she kind of liked this move for Black, if I was going to play a side. If I wasn't going to respond here, um, she liked this side a little bit more. Not only is it bigger than this side, if you actually just count the spaces, you'll see that there's more space up here. Um, it really forestalls the white continuation of this Joseki, which uh, is to attach here. Um, so I liked her move a lot, actually. I thought, oh, yeah, that's, that makes perfect sense. Um, but in the game, white did not attach here. White played here, and this is a very large uh, mistake um, from white's potential, uh, or white, white's potential perspective. Instead, you know, let me get the move tool out. Well, I should definitely attach here and play something like this crosscut. And now all of a sudden you can kind of see that um, this Atari, uh, or this, this stone is in a, that's in Atari, um, is causing more of a, of a defect for the entire group than it is just that one stone. Um, if white just takes the one stone, uh, like in the game, black of course just fixes and now this whole group is just safe, right? There's nothing else really for white to do. Yes, white has a little bit of Aji here, but that's not anything more than Aji, right? It doesn't work. Um, so if we go back here and white... Oops, nope. How do I... Nope, nope, nope. Oh god. This one. Uh, too many variations. Uh, if we play this way, um, if black just takes the stone, uh, you can see that there's several ways this could continue. The simplest is probably just do something like this. Um, white gets to seal black in, um, but white can try for more uh, with moves uh, like this. Uh, actually, does that work? <laughs> I should actually think about this. Yeah, I think this works, right? <laughs> uh, no, it doesn't quite work. No, it does work. Yeah, it totally works. It, it's, it just sort of destroys the corner. 
Um, or uh, black can play here. And if again, if black takes, there's this move, um, threatening this ko. Um, black can take the stone and sente. Black, black probably has to play here. Again, white gets not only a, a captured stone, um, pushes black down to the second line and takes the whole outside. Also would be a very nice variation. Um, there's other variations, of course, too, where uh, black cuts and pushes and tries to split white, but basically black can't expect a really good result. All right, so after black connects, uh, this black's feeling a lot better about this corner. Um, and it also actually makes this stone look uh, s maybe slightly better. Um, just because when white's more uh, solid here, uh, black wants to be further away from that group. So maybe there's a slight um, global advantage, not just a local one, um, when black is able to make this shape in the corner and white only gets this panuki. All right, white jumps out. Uh, the robot says this is fine. The pro says this is fine. The robot does say this is slightly better. Um, if you've never seen this continuation, um, you should. Uh, there's a couple variations here, but this is probably the simplest one, or at least the most played, often played one. In this type of variation, um, black gets very solid territory, um, and really white just gets a little bit stronger on the outside. A um, few more liberties. This isn't an eye, of course, because black can just capture. Um, this is a big endgame point, because after white uh, plays here, um, white will get a couple extra endgame points in the corner because black will have to come and connect. Um, so it actually keeps black's territory quite small. And again, white gains a few extra liberties in the process. Um, white also gains the ability to play moves like this or like this uh, to gain eye space in the bottom. So again, it helps liberties to get out. Um, gets a little bit lower to help build eye space. Um, it's the type of thing you should expect in your games. Um, and if you don't expect it, you should definitely play it against your opponents, because they probably don't expect it either. So again, this is the move here in order to make shape. Uh, if you saw my game one, uh, you recognize this shape, because I played this very successfully against my opponent, and then I screwed it up. Uh, I play, the point is, I played it successfully first, and then screwed it up later. Okay, so white jumps out. Uh, and at this point, I play kind of some bad moves. Let's talk about them. The first move I play is this one. I'm very worried about white playing here. Once white plays here, uh, it's very difficult for uh, black to maneuver this stone. Yeah, I mean, I can still reduce, I can still kind of get out, but chances of it getting cut go way up. And counterattacking actually gets much more difficult. Um, just white could even play this way, this very heavy, and uh, more or less keep black penned in. Um, the other problem, though, is that if black plays here, white could actually uh, attempt to play here. And uh, if we get into this sort of variation, um, you can see that uh, white would probably just give up these stones uh, and take this whole outside and actually potentially make a, a sizable chunk of territory here, something like this. So uh, instead, I peep right now. Now, the robot actually wanted white to answer here which I didn't really consider. I just thought in this shape, white had to play here, and this is the game. Um, but this is interesting. Oh, that's my phone. Phone, what are you doing? I have to call that back later. Sorry. Because, um, again, pushing pushing through here isn't really good for black yet. Um, so I thought that was actually interesting, and I didn't consider it during the actual game, though I should have. Um, that this push is not nearly as good as I think it is, because white uh, can be quite flexible. Um, and, and actually, the reason, I should say, the reason why white can be flexible here is, again, if white blocks this way, um, black has no liberties here, and if black, uh, you know, protects the liberties somehow, the corner uh, shape is now spoiled because of this move. Okay. White does answer in the game. Uh, and again, in the game, I should uh, play something like this, or perhaps like this, or even like this. Of course, I should have just played this without making this exchange. Um, if I'm just going to jump out, this exchange is really bad. And that would probably have been the better thing to do. Like this is, this is I think, the, uh, the best robot move here. Um, it's, you know, it's just a running fight to the middle. And uh, I know Go AIs really don't like to do that sometimes, but in this case it did. Uh, and in second, uh, I don't help white become stronger. 
in the process, and that's really important. So I play here, um, but this move, you're going to see I'm going to be very greedy now, because I'm going to come down here in the bottom. Um, yep, and the game robot says, hey, if I, instead of playing here, I just actually try to make a base or, or sort of counter pinch this. It's really hard to attack because it's strong, but um, I am taking away its its uh, base potential when I pincer this way, as well as giving myself some. Um, if I were to just play here, the game says black is up 52% to 48 or so in the winning percentage. So I have regrets about doing that. But I also, you know, the shape... White's, white, after I make this exchange, this black corner actually is a lot weaker. It's really hard for black to make any sort of significant ter territory down here, and white can sort of boss it around from the outside. Especially later on, um, white can even play moves like this directly that really threaten to kill the entire corner. So we don't want that. But my plan kind of worked. This peep uh, worked out beautifully because it kind of tricked my opponent. Um, she should have realized that she should still play here. Um, this move makes it look a little bit like she can't. Uh, like, this this cut gets more severe. Um, but she totally still can. And again, she has ladders. Um, and this, again, I can just... Or she can just push on this corner shape to get as much strength as she needs in order to get out or capture or do whatever, all sorts of things. Um, but she got scared. She played a very frightened move. And she played here. And this, I mean, it's almost correct, right? It's almost like, okay, this is this is the shape point. Um, it, it feels stronger, right? Because if, again, if white or black just tries to push directly, um, it looks like this ladder is, thing is worse for black than the previous variation. Um, but it's really not that much different. It's really quite similar. Like, black still needs to move over here um, to fix this shape. Uh, white can still harass the corner. White can still run out and, and you know, have the center fight. Like, this is, it's, it's doable. Like, it's doable, but it's not better. I guess that's my point. And the worst part about this move is that black all of a sudden has a lot more maneuver space over here. Um, and in fact, black should probably just play here immediately. Uh, because now this cut actually is really exposed. Um, if, you, if you guys see this, yes, white can still sort of run out and lean on this shape. It'll probably go something like this. Um, but you can see that when black has this point here, if white is worrying about running this group to some place, these two white stones are really weak now. Black already has a move here. Um, before before black didn't, and you can't really attack these two white stones until um, you have your two stones a little bit stronger. Uh, it also helps that black is ahead of white. I just want you to feel the difference. Feel the pressure that are on these two stones, because white still has to kind of keep responding in this area. So it's a very big difference. Anyway, I play a really bad move, at least according to the robot. The robot really hated it. <laughs> I still really like it. Like, this is a move that made me happy. Um, uh, but the pro agrees. The pro, Feng Yun also agrees. This is not a good move. There's no reason to play so lightly here, actually. Um, I, you know, I, 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 this is the type of move you play when White's is really strong and you just need to get something. And that's kind of what I felt like here, but because there is this cut, um, and because there is this much space, and again, if black occupies a space, there's even potential to, to um, you know, reduce this white group to having to run, you know, not, not allowing it eyes. I don't have to play so lightly. Uh, the robot preferred, uh, actually also at this point, preferred this, or I'll just play it, uh, this move. I think that was its number one move here. Um, which totally makes sense. You just sort of dig in, pincer this, try to make eye eyes while you're actually pressuring this over here. And if you can get strong over here, then things like this cut, again, look a lot better. It's number two move was just to play here. Uh, and the pro, the pro actually still liked this one. It didn't want to, uh, she didn't want to commit so much to digging in here. She wanted to um, keep the option open to, to run out and keep these groups split a little bit more strongly, I guess. 
But any any one of those three I think are better than this move. Um, in this case, uh, I think the correct answer for white is white should actually just cut right now. And because white is so strong here, um, black can't really get a good result locally. Black has to um, do something like give up uh, and split these stones. Um, white may not even be able just to play right here. You can see these two stones just can't be saved. Uh, and yes, black got a stick and white's weak here. Um, but, you know, it's really hard to keep this enclosed. Actually, that's a good move though here. <laughs> yeah, actually, this, this gets a little bit more difficult. Hmm. All right, not 100% sure if that's the correct variation how this end up. Maybe um, white doesn't add this move. White should add a move here instead and just allow black to get a little bit more uh, stronger. Um, it's still not like white's in any trouble. Maybe that's better. Uh, but anyway, the g move in the game that Melissa played uh, was here. And this seems natural, like it seems good, and it is good. I think it actually it is good. It's not. It's not. It's not. There's nothing bad. It's just perhaps not um, the best result because uh, it helps again stabilize this, give it a base, take away black space, and it really threatens this eye space. The problem is, is that black will now fix here, and again the pressure is now back on the stick in a very direct manner. So she responds. Uh, the robot actually. This this is probably just. Um, you know, it's a small thing, but I, it's a thing that I, I really appreciate when, like, you have a pro or a robot just point these things out. Um, the robot really liked this move better. And this type of shape, again, it's not, it's not great for making eyes, necessarily. Um, but it is real, it actually is very ambitious, and the cut is protected. Right, because now, um, if we just cut directly, this goes right to a ladder, so you guys can see that. Um, it actually, it also has a, exerts a greater influence on the bottom. And as I was saying earlier, moves like this actually threaten to do a lot of damage to the corner, even after black plays this move. Um, it becomes a lot easier to play that when white owns this space. When white only owns this space, uh, you can easily see that if white were to play here, black would just come on top and split. Right, and this would just be an overplay. So I really liked... Oops, no, 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 Where I lost it. This move. Uh, just just this move. Again, this shape, uh, we talked about this shape in game one. Um, just when it's sort of in the middle of the board. Not a good shape for making eyes. It's a really good shape for connecting. Um, and in this case, because it has a, has a nice nicer follow-up, uh, I think it's more appropriate. Okay, so black out to play there. White makes this a uh, little, little too solid of a shape, but it's still okay. And then I play this move. And this move, I thought in the game, it was actually just good for me. Like, I thought this was just good. Uh, it turns out it's more of a trick move. Because white has multiple good variations here. And I think the strongest variation uh, is this one. And this was uh, what... Um, Wait, was that it? <laughs> I should have remembered. Uh, is it here? Yeah, it must be there, right? Yeah. Yes, okay, good. Yeah, because white, black still has to play a move like this here. Uh, I guess black can play here. Um, yeah, I guess maybe... Hmm. Uh, oh, no, no, wait, wait, is it... It must be there. All right, I won't try to lie to you. Wouldn't lie to you guys. Why does this feel good now? <laughs> hmm. Mm, can't say. All right. Anyway, I, the Feng, Yu, Feng Yun and in, in when I was showing her this game, um, she looked at actually a few variations here, and uh, this was the key point for White to get. Obviously, you can't really get it right now because you just lose that stone. Um, but if, if white can get a stone here, and that's, I thought this other variation did that. Um, but it really doesn't, because it still goes to this thing. Which is why you connect first. But if you connect first, black plays here. And then you can't get that point. So, and if black plays here, actually white still can't play that point. Hmm. In this case, white just plays here. Hmm. 
All right, never mind. Uh, the robot liked this variation too, though. Um, even though it looks like white's over concentrated. Okay. Uh, weird. Um, this is also playable, though. Like, this is also doable. This is what Melissa played in the game. However, she kind of tricks herself a little bit. Or a lot. Because <laughs> uh, I play this move instead of just pulling back. Um, and normally this would be good, like a good move to make shape with these stones over here. Um, but in this case, it's not because white should immediately just take this Atari and yeah, like I can make a mouth shape, but look at this. Um, white's almost connected the two, uh, quasi weak groups. Uh, and I still only have one eye. So this would be, this would be like a, actually quite a nice success for white if it were to happen like this. Um, and of course, if black defends here, um, then white can play here and sort of spoil the shape. Um, and black's still sort of scrounging for eyes. Um, I mean, they're there. You can, fi you can find one eye, at least, um, but it's more difficult. Okay, but in the game, Melissa plays here instead of taking this Atari. And this is pretty not good, <laughs> because black's next move is here. Oh, and then maybe this is the trick move. Maybe this is the part I got confused. Yeah, because white should still cut here, and then I think play here. Yes, okay, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, and then if it looks like black's going to eat this, um, but he really can't, or she really can't. Wait, I'm I'm black. He can't. Yeah. Wait a second. Yes. Whoa, had a out of body experience there for a second. Um, but yeah, this is there we go. That's how you can get this move. <laughs> so actually, this move is an overplay, and so she gets tricked again. Obviously, she doesn't want to take this Atari and then this Atari um, because then these two stones get swallowed. Um, but she doesn't see. This move followed by this move. And this this is the combination uh, that you need to be able to find. Um, if black plays here, I think white just plays here. And can even play there. And again, black can come over here and link up the stones. Um, but this false eyes, or at least one false eye, and I guess black maybe links up here. Uh, huh. Alright, I hadn't thought of that. Mm. <laughs> Maybe there's an exchange here that needs to be taken first. I don't know if that doesn't work either. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe this is co. Maybe it's a co shape. Um, but whatever it is, this, this, and this is the key point, at least according to both the robot and the pro. Uh, but she plays here and just makes this really awful looking connection. Look at this over concentratedness. And this lets me make a beautiful shape down here. Tiger's mouth, again, we don't really like it in the center of the board, but on the edges, it's really nice. So this white group still doesn't really have guaranteed two eyes. Black's group is basically alive. Um, clearly, you can see there's actually a connection over here, if you don't know this. Um, black can play here to actually just connect directly to these stones. Uh, or here, this one also works. Uh, this one, uh, funny enough, doesn't work. This is in a lot of Tesuji books, right? This is like a common Tesuji problem. Like this stone doesn't link up between these two groups. Uh, you have to play this one or this one. If you play this one, this is a good go problem. If you never, if you don't know why this doesn't uh, link up, pause the video and just do this go problem because this is like classic Tesuji problem. Okay. For the rest of us, we're continuing on. Uh, black at this point came, or not black. White came back and just played here, mainly because there's nothing really left to do. Um, locally, uh, the best moves are probably here or here, just depending on helping one of the sides. Um, I think these are both good. I think this. I think the robot liked this one, um, but the also robot didn't didn't not like this one. Yeah, that's English. Uh, so, I mean, also, is this a big move? Black plays here, and this is, okay, this is probably like my favorite move the whole game that was pointed out by the robot. So the robot was really good in this area. Like I really liked um, what the robot was doing, both for white and for black. Like it thought both of our moves were crap, basically. Um, I played here thinking this this uh, formed a nice shape here. It really doesn't, this is not a really good shape, um, by the way. A two space with a with a diagonal. Like it's like, it's like a barely acceptable shape in dire circumstances. Not a shape you wanna make. 
Um, <clears throat> and a three space extension, you know, offset, three, third line, fourth line is okay. So I was like, okay, this, this looks good. Like this feels like a good point. But the problem is number one, the shape still has problems. Uh, if black just has to cover like this, there's all sorts of issues, you know, where white can get underneath. Um, but even before before white does anything like that, um, white will throw a stone in here. And there's no really good way to actually fix this type of shape, maybe with the exception of that, is the only good way you can, and that's not even a good way, like that feels over constant, it just, yeah, it doesn't feel right. There's still a quasi weak point here and here in the shape, just depending on the corner. Uh. So, and uh, yeah, and if, again, if you fix it this way, then you're just giving up something over here. Uh, so it doesn't, this move doesn't fix this uh, invasion like at all. It, it, ha it helps a tiny bit, but the shape is just inefficient. So the robot came up with this one. And this is like really stupid looking. Like this is just not something you want to do in Go normally. Right? We, I, I yell at my students when they do this. Um, balancing a third line stone with a fourth line stone great. Do it all day long, do it every game, do it all the time. Having a third line stone being balanced on the other side by a fifth line stone, that's terrible. Uh, because white can just play in here, right? And then white can either dig in deeper to the right or bounce out and get the outside to the left. Um, is this white, white has just too many ways to go in here, basically, without any sort of fear. But... I think the reasoning, and this is, I don't think robots reason quite like this, of course, um, but the human explanation for why this is good is that if you play here, this one stone is trying to do too many things. Often we like our stones when they do multiple things, but not if they do like three things half-assed. And that's kind of what this stone is. This is like half-ass attacking, half-ass extending this corner group, half-ass making a base for this stone. This is not doing anything particularly well. So, <clears throat> if those are three different things you want to do, and neither one of, or none of them are done very effectively, that means you're probably going to need to play three more stones in order to, uh, you know, solve all those little problems. So when the robot plays here, it says, "You know what? I know I need to play at least one more move over here. Uh, but I'm just, I'm just going to use that opportunity. If you don't come in here, I'm just going to put more pressure on this group. So I'm just going to do one thing. I'm just going to put maximum pressure on this group." And if you decide to that you need to get out, ah, now look, I have fifth line territory, uh, and I'll do two. I'll, I'll you know where I, where I played one move that did like three move three things half assed before I'm gonna play. I'm, I'm I'm committing myself. You're playing two moves, like you're committing yourself when you play this fifth line move. You're saying I'm gonna play the second move, but those two moves are actually gonna do all three things I want them to do effectively. So instead of getting like, uh, no, the math doesn't work. I was gonna say like. You do, you put, you play one stone to get like three half good things for one and a half, right? And if you play two stones, you get three good things, but like three divided by two is one and a half. And then three times a half is one and a half. So apparently they're mathematically the same in my head. Never mind. Anyway, I love this move is cool, right? This is the type of situation that I would just feel disgusting if I played it and pretty sure I would get yelled at. Um, but you're saying, hey, I don't mind if you play this right now. Like, I know I have a defect there. You might as well play it. Um, but while you're playing it, you know, I'm then going to do the one thing really well. And meanwhile, the stone is, again, still really flexible. So, again, probably my favorite move that the robot pointed out right there. Whoops, I'm going too fast. Uh, let's use arrow keys. All right, this move the robot hated. Just hated. It was just like, what the hell are you doing, White? Uh, <laughs> robot really wanted to play here. Um, Fang Yun really wanted to play here. And I'm not sure which is better. I don't know who to trust. Probably Fang Yun. Um, you know, again, the robot probably spent a lot more time going through various variations to come up with this move. Um, but Fang Yun's better than the robot. So, and she came up with this in about, I don't know, two and a half seconds. Um, this move has the added benefit of this wedge uh, is basically uh, a, a pretty severe threat. Black really wants to fix this way. Um, when white plays here, it's not so clear that this wedge is as good anymore um, because white will play moves like this first and 
then I don't know. I guess there's no cut there. Maybe not. Maybe maybe actually it is just as good. Maybe maybe this this actually has all the the same good threats. It just looks like black has a lot more options to mess with you. Um, but maybe maybe that's not actually true. But they're both very similar. They're both very similar. Okay. Uh, yeah. Just just not the right direction to play. Um, at this point, after Black takes this point, Robot says Black's winning by 60%. So I want to take a second just to look at why Black is winning by, you know, or not by by 60%, but 60% to win the game. 60-40 versus 40%. percent Black would make Black winning by, hey, one and a half times more likely. That number keeps coming up here. All right, number one. Uh, this is not territory in the bottom. This can actually still be invaded, but it's really hard for White to invade it while this stick is here. All right, so that's so... As long as white has a stick here, you can basically count this as black territory. Uh, and that's not small. This is about 35 points. You know, we'll just round down a little bit. Uh, black also has this corner pretty solidly, we're, we're pretty sure, um, for something a little bit over 10 points. And we should be able to expect to get anywhere between, we'll say up to about 5 points here. So we're looking at a pretty solid, uh, you know, 50 points for black. If we look at white, I'm basically not counting this <laughs> as anything. Maybe two points. Maybe, you know, we can give white a point here or something. Maybe we add this and this and we say, okay, with the Comey, that's 10 points. Uh, but basically, these two stones cancel out, right? So we're not going to give white any territory over here. Um, so basically, we can only give white this block of territory. And so that's really only about 30 points. And that's all that white has. Well, plus the Comey. So 30 plus 10. Uh, White has about 40 points. We're looking at 50 versus 40. Not an insignificant lead. Uh, White plays here. And again, this is... Uh, I think I think this is actually a good direction. Um, White's saying, hey, right now the middle is most important. I've got a weak group still running around. Maybe there's some Aji. I still have this group. Um, and not only that, I actually have potential in the middle. I have a stone here. So this is, this is a good move. But I am about to play a bad move. I'll show you the move I should play first. And actually, if you want to pause the video, and I, I should say what I'm saying before I have you pause it. Pause the video and try to find the move for yourself, and then unpause it and see if it's the right place. So here we go, pause the video. All right, and you're back, and how many of you found this point? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four. Seven people found it, all right. Yeah, this is the move I should play. Robot, pro, everyone agrees. This is the move. Basically, there's not that many points out here for white. White, white, yeah, I can cut here and do things. Um, but, again, there's still this weak white group. So black's going to be able to run out this way or make this into a lot of points. This is not sealed in. Black can still actually just extend into any sort of potential over here. Um, if black gets at all stronger, this group can come under attack. This is not a good place to make points, right? So white can't really expect very much. Um, so, or if, if same thing, if white plays this way and doesn't cut, same thing. Again, how many points is white going to make here realistically? Not that many. Black will just eat the corner and actually just continue to reduce over here. It'd be a very, very clean, nice move for black. In the game, though, I played this. It's bad. It's real bad. Because now, at this point... You can see that, hey, not only did white actually solidify the corner, um, white actually has more potential here. And having this stone here again, that helps the weak groups. I play another bad move. I play this one. And the reason why this is bad uh, is it leaves actually some defects in here that white can use to throw the game into chaos again, especially if there's a bunch of weak white groups running, or even black, if black finds a weak group or two running. Um, having having these these bases that are a little bit overextended, a little bit over ambitious, um, not very good. Feng Yun uh, thought at this point I should just play here, and just you know I don't need this group to link up to this one. That's the thing, and that's what this stone kind of tries to do. Again, it's like doing the three half-assed things. This is Joseki, yes, but it's really only Joseki when you're trying to build points here. Um, and balance out some sort of influence, which I'm not. I'm not doing it at all. I just need to make a base and live. Uh, the robot actually had a completely different view. The robot wanted to play here and just say, you know what? I really don't care if you come in here. There's no points anyway. I just want to make sure I'm out into the center first. 
is I think both of these are viable. I have no idea again who's better again, but they're both good ideas. My idea is this bad, though. Not only did I play this bad move, I kind of caused a separate extension. However, my opponent does a terrible thing, like absolutely terrible. Although, it does kind of give her a chance. Like, it's, it's like one of those moves that is a bad move, but you do it anyway because it gives you this like long shot chance it's like it's, it's like you know throwing the hail mary pa pass right it's like you just go for it uh, white turns here and this totally fixes uh my overextended shape uh what does white get for why does white do this well again the only thing white's caring about is saying hey i need to own this if i can own this i can maybe unite my weak group into a moyo and that can be worth a lot of points. And then finally, she plays here. This is the move. This is like... You can almost start to see this white behemoth forming here. Alright, I make this exchange. This is okay. This is okay. Like, this is not terrible. Um, so I make this shape over here. And now my cut is actually completely fixed. And with this move, um, <coughs> this white group uh, actually feels a lot more pressure. Like, to the point where it's going to die kind of pressure. Uh, the move that the robot played I thought was actually really interesting. I still don't know how I feel about it. It makes me feel kind of uncomfortable. The robot wanted to play here next for white. And again, this kind of feels like it does like three things half-assed. Um, but maybe it's good enough that it works. Um, what does this do? Well, number one, it threatens to make eye space. Number two, it threatens to get the group out. Number three, uh, it also just threatens to seal in here very aggressively. And that would be very uh, big for white in order to get to be able to get that. Um, needless to say, my opponent didn't find that move. Uh, instead, she played a really bad move. I think I even made a note of how many like percentage chance to win the game it swung her. No, I didn't. I think it was like close to twenty percent or something. Like, like it went from like sixty percent black favor to like eighty percent black favor. Some some insane thing like that. Just in this one move. And then here, I played fire. Bam! Black gets to play here. And now, all of a sudden, if you are reading any sort of moves to get white out, you can see it's really hard. Like, it's really hard to get this group anywhere safe after this shoulder hit. She tries. Oh, yeah, here, the robot didn't like this honey. The robot just wanted to back off and just let white crawl. Again, nowhere to go. There's just nowhere to go. Um, there's a few interesting things. You can see white can kind of make an eye down here, but only kind of. Like, it's like super gote, and this is not an eye. And so, like, where is white going to find a second eye? You can, you can see how quickly this thing collapses. Um, black can play here, it turns out. Like, this is okay. Um, this is very dangerous. Play this sort of driving to Suji. And then white played here, and again, oh, this was, this was, uh, it wasn't the, oh, maybe, yeah, the computer really didn't like this move. This is the one that lost a ton of points on. I don't remember how many, how, what percentage chance it lost here. The thing is, usually what happens, like, when you're watching, like, the little Leela win percentage counter, what happens is someone will play a move, and the game will, like, wildly swing in that, in that favor, and then as, like, the next five moves get played, even if they're the moves that Leela predicts is the most likely to get played, it'll gradually, like, normalize the percentage. I haven't quite wrapped my brain around exactly why that pattern keeps persisting. Um, I mean, I kind of understand it, but there's probably some other uh, idiosyncrasy that causes it to do that over and over again. Um, so, like, when, you know, the game wildly swings into Black's favor, and then during all these moves, like, it kind of normalizes back to, like, you know, 65% or something. And then... Bam, she plays here, and the computer, again, swings wildly back over, you know, like 80% black to win. Uh, I play this move, and actually at this point, yeah, sorry, it's only a little over 70%, I think. Um, this group is dead. Like, this this white group can't be saved at this point. So not only did black get this whole corner territory, still has this kind of, although actually white got the this move in, so white's actually much stronger now, so we really can't count this as black territory anymore. Um, this is a lot of points. Like, this is a lot of points. Black, white has to play the, the most severe follow-up. I just 
back off, just make the base. If she comes out, and I make I make a mistake. Like I'm 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 this is this is a very common scenario I find myself in. Where I kill something huge and I go, okay, don't screw it up. Don't screw it up, don't screw it up, don't screw it up. Don't screw it up, don't screw it up, don't screw it up. And I'm looking at, there's a, maybe a potential for like shortage of liberties in here, or maybe boy can get a cent an eye that I can't take away, and if I can get an eye here that I can't take away, maybe there's a chance for white to um, do this sort of Aji business, and come here and, whoops, maybe be able to get another eye, you know, in this area. Um, so I was, I was really cautious, and I played here. I disconnected. It's like, you know, I, don't screw it up, don't screw it up, don't screw it up. Feng Yun and Robot say just to play here. Just keep the pressure on these three stones. White can't really cut here, right? This is just not an acceptable enough result, even if, um, you know, let's say this all this happens. Uh, you know, to me, this, like, like white can quasi live in this variation. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, these two stones are now garbage. Black controls the outside, is really strong everywhere, has Sente. You know, it's it's like like black has no problems for the rest of the game. But this is the type of thing I was really scared about. But both Pro and Robot agree I need to play there. Uh, so here, this clamp is fine. Um, but both Pro and Robot, I think, also agree. Just take. Um, Again, you're trying to build this whole area. You can see how much, how big of a difference this makes. And additionally, this gives you this immediate sort of follow-up um, to reduce white or reduce black um, and harass this group. And you know, it's just, it's just, you gotta finish the shape. Um, but white maybe jumps out one move too early and says, "Aha! Look, this is mine." And if we do the score estimator. Should we go in a second? I, I'm pretty sure, like, even if you added, if you just said this is dead for black and black at all these points, if black does nothing in here and just lets white settle this whole Moyo's territory, white wins the game by like 20, 30, maybe even 40 points or something. Let's have a look. I counted it in game, I don't know what it is now. 20 points. And we didn't give, oh, we haven't taken that yet. Yeah, nor any, yeah. Okay, so it's only 20 points, but. I guess I also didn't count these. White bear, white wins. Let's just say white wins. Uh, so I'm I'm having a little like I don't say heart attack. It's not that severe, but I'm still going. Oh my god, how is this possible? Look, I've killed this huge group, and somehow white still has a chance to win the game. So I go in, and this by itself is not a bad point. Um, I think I think I think this is a, a good way to invade. Uh, it looks really deep, but again, there's some weaknesses here, um, and we both make mistakes in this process. White kicks, of course. This is uh, Joseki, also Joseki. Uh, here, though, we could debate. White White might even consider just playing here. Um, I'm not sure which is better. All right, White played this way. And in the game, I played here, but I should just take this Atari immediately. Like, like, this is the way I should play. And, uh, you know, even though there's not really... <clears throat> I don't have, you know, two eyes yet, certainly. You can actually almost start to see that this shape um, start, starts to get much easier to defend than, uh, you know, white can, can deal with. Uh, you can see as, if black just is able to keep running out... Let's say this this sort of thing just happens. Uh, you can see this is actually a pretty severe. Uh, you know now now these three or four white stones are behind the black uh, <laughs> area here. You know there, there there's problems for white. Um, white black will very uh, easily be able to squeeze or, or do some sort of um, you know uh, crude sequence to be able to make eyes. So there, there's there's some problems um, with white, and, and again, if we play this out this way again, if white comes on this side, then you know black will run towards the thinness that is over here, 
And so it's very, very difficult for white to kill this thing completely. However, I never make this Atari. And this is, this is, and not only do I not make this Atari, I don't make this jump, I, I play this diagonal move. And this is uh, very not good, not good. Uh, white takes away that key point right away. Um, the robot had, they liked this move, but it liked this move slightly better. I was like, wow, yeah. I wasn't completely sure that black doesn't have things like this now, um, but it's, this is, this, if you can play this, that's the move to just, you know, kill the whole thing. Um, but this, this looks very severe, like black's just kind of, again, having a freak out moment. Uh, so I just try to make a mess, right? I don't, you don't know what to do. You have, uh, you know, way too many white stones in your neighborhood. Just try to make a mess. <laughs> That's what we do. So I hane, she hanes, I double hane. Um, I think the robot liked this double hane slightly better, but again, basically, you just, you just have to just expose any weakness you can and just keep exposing weakness after weakness. Uh, this move, the robot really didn't like, though if you're gonna play this way, I said take this Atari first um, before you fix anything. See if you can get that. Um, I think she didn't in game because if she does this, she was worried maybe a little bit about something like this. But I mean, if if this lives, the game is over, right? So she has to be willing to like fight Ko. I think. Uh, <laughs> it's real scary. I mean, it's scary. It's it's like just harrowing for both players. But this this is the game is on the line. It looks like black has an advantage anyway. Um, so you have to, you know, play some pretty risky things. And so when she just plays here, um, I get to honey back on this side. And so even though I have weaknesses, I don't care that I have weaknesses. Like that's weaknesses. My weaknesses don't care about. This is all her territory anyway. I just need to expose weaknesses in her in her shapes so I get free moves. And if I can link three or four free moves together. Hey, that's like an eye, or that's like a route to an escape. Again, she plays a really solid move here. And now I have three friends. And of course, we don't want to fix them. Doing this is a terrible idea. You know, we just have pokes here. <coughs> that, uh, like, what did, <laughs> although actually in this case, that was, I didn't even think about this, I, I'm just guessing. Maybe this actually works fine. <laughs> Actually, really hard to poke directly. Maybe you can poke one and then have to play like a, a move like this, because she's kind of thin over here. Um, I don't want to make anything too heavy, right? I just want to. I just want to make a continue to make a mess until I can see something working. <clears throat> so I just ask to come in. I say, "Hey, I have three friends. Can I go to my three friends?" And uh, at this point, she doesn't really have a good response over here. Like no matter what she plays, there's weaknesses. Um, cuts, Ataris, pokes. It's really hard to know what to do as white. And so I think she was feeling... Um, also, we were, we were both actually getting low on time. There was, uh, again, those games where, where I my, I take just as much time as my opponent, I, I tend to do really well. If I'm taking more time than my opponent, I know that's that's like a, a tautology, um, <clears throat> you know, because the losing player tends to take more time. But even when I'm not in a losing position, if I'm taking more time, I tend to lose those games. <laughs> Um, it's probably just more related to the fact that if my opponent's taking time, I do a lot of thinking on their turns. Um, and it's probably better thinking. I feel like maybe on my turns, when the timer's ticking, I'm like maybe more stressed out or something. So maybe my quality of thinking time is actually worse on my own turn than it is on my opponent's turn. Maybe that's the theory. Anyway, <clears throat> she decides to, well, if I'm going to come in here, I'm gonna, she's going to come in here and potentially kill the whole thing. And hey, I think if you're behind, I can't really argue with this. Uh, I find this move, which, uh, you know, it's, <laughs> I'm just making a mess. We're just going to continue to make a mess. I'm just looking for weaknesses to probe here, and again, waiting for the right time to come back and make a shape over here. She takes this Atari, of course, we just Hane again, <laughs> you know? Like, like even, even if you're not doing any of the reading in this type of situation, uh, Please t please acknowledge like the strategy here, right? You have something you really want. Don't be committed to anything, right? Even I screwed up these three stones, right? We all, we can all sort of acknowledge that these three stones were not quite played right. Um, but I didn't get overcommitted to them, 
and I just kept, I mean, in this case, I used them very lightly to just get three stones here, and, you know, just played just this most slapstick comedy of, <clears throat> you know, moves. Uh, but here, this move, uh, really dubious. Because before, when she's playing this way, um, <clears throat> she just needs to keep this strong and then try to kill this entire thing, right? That's, that's the real objective when she comes in like this. But she got scared and switched her strategy. And now, this is not so clear anymore that that's what she's trying to do. Now you've given black a free shape, and if you don't connect here, black's going to get a whole bunch more free stuff, and you're going to come under attack. So she takes this connection, <clears throat> but now that leaves this weakness here. And so I get this free Atari. So not only did I get more stones inside of her, her Moyo, uh, nearby, the friends are nearby, right? This is almost looking like, hey, we might be able to make an eye here, like inside of her giant Moyo. She still has to respond to this Atari. And she makes another mistake. In the game, she just connects. What she should do is drink some tea. Yeah, tea would be good. You guys can think what she should play. She should play here. Because she needs to bank, go back to that whole strategy of banking this whole center on something, right? She needs to play as severe as possible in order to win this game. So she has to bank on this co. And this this co is is basically her only real path to victory at this point. Um, but she doesn't. She just connects. And once you connect, uh, I I've got some more weaknesses to probe at. I take this peep, but she doesn't connect. And this this I think she can play. Her. I think that's okay. I kind of think she should just connect, though. Um, you can see why she wouldn't want to just connect, right? Because look, look, I'm just, I'm just, I'm like out. <laughs> I don't even need to make eye space in here. I can, I'm just out. Um, but <clears throat> again, I just pull back, and I'm still threatening that cut to cut off that stick group. So again, she asks again, and you know, my, I'm like, well, hey, I'll, you know, I, I can give up a few points here if I can take away your entire middle. Again, I've killed a huge group. Um, oh no, wait, I, I didn't do that yet. Wait, wait for it. <clears throat> I just block here. Again, I'm still, I still can cut here, I can connect, I've got lots of options. She plays here. And I just say, okay, you can connect out, if I can connect out. All right, if she plays here, I play here. We're both connected, and the game's over, right? This is, this is, you know, yeah, she's got some points over here, and over here. <clears throat> but I've got this, I've got a huge group up here, and this is actually becoming a little bit more solid now after I got that move in. But she decides to fight and take this, uh, or prevent me from connecting this stone. I play here. I think this is wrong. Um, I think I, you know, in the game I got scared. I was like, you know, I'll still let you connect out. I just want to make sure that, you know, I have either enough liberties or can make eyes. Because uh, I couldn't quite read out this capturing race all the way. Um, because counting liberties in this, when they're so open is so hard. So I just offered her a, an exchange, basically. You can connect if I can... You know, eat these two or make eye space. Um, but she didn't want any of it. She now took this stone. Um, again, if she didn't take the stone, right, if, you, if she tries to get this out, um, there's this Atari. And, you know, now she takes, but she's still, like, she can't get it out, basically, is what I'm saying. So the, so the, the first move in order to get it out, she has to <laughs> not have a shortage of liberty problems up there. Um, and at this point, this stone is actually good. Um, because now I should cut her off. And now the stick's in super trouble. Um, in the game, I'm still thinking, all right, I've still won this game, I just need to not screw up, not screw up, not screw up. So I just I just fix there. She fixes there, I fix it there. Now this group is absolutely connected to this other group. Um, this also just makes me happy in the sense that I don't even have to worry about potentially Sente or I f taking away moves here if I connect this group to the center group. Like all this stuff down here doesn't become Sente for her to harass the life of this group, so, you know, I, I thought, hey, good enough. <clears throat> Alright, super dangerous move, again, I should just play here, like, like, just go, oh, you want that? That's great, here, I'm gonna eat this. Um, but I'm, again, I'm just in that turtle mode of like, I won the game, don't screw up, I won the game, don't screw up. Whoops, no, don't close! <laughs> uh, she peeps here. And again, I'm just like, all right, I won the game, don't screw up. Won the game, don't screw up. Don't get overcommitted to something. 
Uh, she plays here again, bad move. And now I just play this, this cut. Uh, she does have this co-sequence that I will show you like this. Because um, after here, you can see um, black needs a move. I should, again, I should play that. I don't know why I was dumb and just play this. I know why. I know why I played this one because I was thinking in my head, I won the game, don't screw up. I won the game, don't screw up. So I played this one. But again, same, same rules apply. I should still just play here. There's no cut here. Right? There's just no, there's no, whoops. There's nothing for her to cut or do. <clears throat> but again, I was just playing super solid. Won the game, don't screw up, won the game, don't screw up. Oh, maybe I was also thinking, maybe, maybe I, because I, you know, I saw this co, obviously. Um, maybe I was thinking this also gave her less co-threats. Maybe? I don't know. Anyway, the first co-threat's up there, and that's a good one. She takes... Again, I have all these local co-threats. Like, she needs to play so many threats here. Um, there's another threat she needs to play. Again, I just come down. There's my threat. And then, whoops, and then she plays this one. And this threatens to, of course, save the group that I killed. <clears throat> but especially after I make these two, or she makes these two, these two threats as, <clears throat> as part of the exchange. Oh, I need more tea. Oh. My corner is rock solid now. So if she brings this back to life, and again, this this group now attached to the middle, got uh, connected to the middle group. So if she actually brings this back to life, it has no effect on the overall state of the game whatsoever, other than these points coming back to life. So I go, you know what, that's great. I'm going to let you bring those back to life, and I'm just going to kill your stick group. So it's it's basically just fair, like nothing happened. Um, the group that was dead became alive, but the group that sh was alive just became dead. Like there's no other strategic implications. Everything else on the board is safe. So this is points for points. And Black gets Sente out of it. So I get to play this move. Um, now at this point, it's still... Uh, here, let me before this move, if we let's just put a stone here, a stone here. I want to see the score estimator. Um, white is actually winning, yeah, by <laughs> 20 points apparently. Um, and actually, probably a little bit more since these are obviously white stones there. Although it doesn't give black any of these points over here, so maybe maybe this cancels out with this and this. Um, so the score estimator in this case, oh, but white has all these points. Oh, God damn it! The KGS score estimator is trash. This is this is like the best reason is go use the Tigem server and use their client because the score estimator is fantastic on that one. All right. Anyway, you can see all this these mismarked points. Oh, white's winning <laughs> um, in terms of raw points. However, I think the the point is is that black can actually reduce a lot here, and black has sente. So even though white has, let's let's say, a 15-point advantage, <clears throat> all that can go away um, very easily just with Sente here and having the endgame. Because all of white's points are basically connected to one territory. So you can just keep poking at it from all sides. White tries to preserve as much as possible. Um, but this move's a little greedy, actually. Uh, because I can just sort of snake in this way. And this move... Uh, Again, she needs to make point, all these points over here. Um, is a little bit too greedy as well because she doesn't see this sequence in the corner uh, with this poke and then this turn. Um, black can actually connect up to this group. Um, there's no way to stop it. You can see that that just dies, right? Or um, let's see the way to stop it. If we do this, you can see that's just connected. And there's actually still um, this Hane, is Sente, to destroy this. So black really needs to play a move here. Um, and then black can play here again, and again. White really needs another move over here, otherwise this is all Sente. Uh, black can just connect here, and Sente. And then we can come in this way and just take away these. Hane here first. <clears throat> you know, all the above. Uh, so anyway, if we get to here, oh, not that, that's not the game. That's not the game. That's not the game. That's not the game. Oh, right there. Okay, that's the game. Yeah, B plus resign. Uh, the robot actually only says black has a 79% chance of winning. Um, if we look at the score estimator now, is 
This is black's up by 31. Oh, because it's saying this is dead, which is not true. But black can harass it again while he's coming into here. Here, let's uh, let's play here and then here and then here and then. Oh, I don't need to play. I want to play this one. Maybe here. Here, if we just do this, what does the score estimator say now? It says by white by one and a half. Well, damn it, white. Here, let's put that there, put that there, put that there, put that there. All right, now what does it say? Damn it, no. Here, I'm just exchanging stones just to clarify all these little situations. I'm still missing one down here. It still says white, white, white by one and a half. Oh, it still gives white points in here, though. Why? And why are all the, this is not white points? And these are black points. All right, this is this is garbage. <laughs> I really don't want to spend all my time fixing all these little points. Anyway, black black wins. It's actually not by a lot, but it's you know probably after you flip all those points, it's probably like up, up to ten points. Probably about, black's probably about fifteen ahead on the board. Um, so. Yeah, that was the game. Uh, again, I'm just going to cruise through it very quickly here at the end. Um, so the, the big... The things that I'll, I'll say that I learned, you know, most important from this, um, just this type of situation, um, just reminding myself, yes, this is actually the smallest side of the board, and I played it during the game. Ah, kick myself. Ah, slap. <laughs> Um, playing here, I just need to, but and this is more from her mistake, right? This should be the follow-up, not this move, when you're in this shape. That's pretty good. Uh, this is a bad peep, right? You're weakening the corner. Not the right direction. Look, this is the right direction. It's so obvious. <laughs> white, weak group that has a lot of liberties. White, weak group that has a lot of liberties. Two crabby stones in between them. Guess where I should play. Uh, yeah, all this stuff's a little bit tricky. Yeah, don't do three half-assed things. That's a good thing not to do. And then, just again, paying attention to the entire board. Just don't follow blind Joseki. Corner's biggest. Take the corner. Uh, overextending a little bit there. And then here, this is her mistake, right? This is greedy. Way too greedy. Just need to read out the life and death sequences of your weak groups. Too greedy. And here, yeah, in this case, I just need to blindly follow Joseki actually, and take that Atari. Because I mean, it makes a big difference with this cut later. Like, I can't quite do it right now, because white's too strong. But after black runs up, this cut is available and can cut these four stones off. Make a mess if your opponent has some huge, you know, ambitions for making Moyos into territory. Just make a mess. And bide your time until they screw up, <laughs> which is what happened here. And again, I need to just be a little more aggressive with my kind of, again, yeah, again, at this point, we were both getting low on our hour and a half time. Like, we had been playing for quite a while, so neither of us really wanted to read out this huge capturing race. Um, but I I think both the uh, the robot and Feng Yun agrees that <laughs> black, black wins that capturing race if I get this cut in. Um, White does have this co thing. Um, but black also needs to find that move. That's also a important move here. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Yep. And the rest is kind of history. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, don't watch this. If you're still watching this, man, you do not know how to follow directions. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>